Now from our uh, winning owner of today's 46th annual Quicken Loans 400 here at Michigan International Speedway, winning for the first time the number 48 team uh, in the Lowe's Cobalt Tool Chevrolet here at Michigan. But it's the third win of the season, uh, certainly right now, and uh, uh, that, that looms big uh, as the season continues to unfold. But, uh, Rick, congratulations. This is your fifth straight win in the Sprint Cup Series, the third time that has happened uh, in your uh, organization history. You, you did that twice in, uh, in 2007, and that time you, you also had a streak of six straight wins back in, in 2007. So uh, congratulations. Uh, maybe just talk about this win today and just about how the overall organization is performing. Well, this is, uh, this is a great win for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, for here in, the, in Michigan for Chevrolet and uh, being a Chevrolet dealer and, a, and racing Chevrolets, this means a lot to win this race. Um, it's good to see Jimmy, after leading so many laps here, uh, close the deal because we've run out of gas, broke motors, blown tires with, I think I remember a couple times coming off a of four and losing it. So. For him to be able to finish it off today was it, it was it was really good. So, and again to to keep the the streak going, get five. That's that's great. And uh, this was this was a uh, a good race, and uh, it just played out the way we needed it to play out. And uh, all our cars did ran well. And uh, I think we were a little off early in the year, and we've been kind of clicking here lately. And uh, uh, real proud of all the guys at, at, at the motorsports because of working hard together and Casey had a good day and uh, just a tribute to Chad and all the crew chiefs and drivers working hard, working together, the engine shop, chassis shop. Everybody's really putting out a lot of effort right now and it's it's paying off. And our winning crew chief is Chad Knauss and uh, Chad uh, certainly uh, it, it, it was a, a good race. It featured a little bit of everything. And, uh, and certainly the, uh, the, the role that uh, the entire team played today was big as, uh, as uh, you know, I think it just showed again today just how big of a team sport this is. But certainly 48, once again, uh, made the right calls and uh, things came your way. And, and now you've got five straight wins in the Hendrick camp and then three wins uh, for Jimmy Johnson. That leads, uh, that leads all chase drivers. Uh, so just talk about the significance of today's win. Whew. That's pretty cool stats you got there, Gary. Thanks. It's uh, today was it was just it was great. Um, excuse me, my little allergies are kicking in right now, so I'm struggling a little bit. But uh, it was uh, it was a long time coming. Obviously, we enjoy coming up here to Michigan and uh, we've raced very well up here and we haven't been able to close the deal on quite a few occasions. So coming in here very optimistic uh, after what we did. At Charlotte Motor Speedway, the way that the the company ran at Pocono as well, so we felt uh, felt like we had an opportunity. We qualified solid, and the Cobalt Chevrolet this weekend was really really fast. So, same race car that we had at Charlotte Motor Speedway, so that was a good decision on our part to uh, to get that Joker turned around and brought back to the track. And um, you know, the guys had great pit stops today, solid pit stops, good strategy. We we knew that there was going to be some opportunities to play some some strategy today. Uh, we also knew that if you had a fast race car, you could maybe overcome strategy that maybe somebody else would play. Uh, so we were fortunate enough to have a very fast race car and uh, and hit the strategy correct at the right time and uh, obviously put it all together for, for a solid win. And as far as Hendrick Motorsports goes, I think if you go back and you look at starting at Daytona, uh, the, the engine shop and the chassis shop, the way that the – Hendrick Motorsports affiliated teams and team itself has performed has been pretty impressive as a whole. Uh, the chassis shop, we know we were, we build chassis for a lot of the other competitors as well, and those cars have ran very, very well. The teams that have run with our engines have have run very, very well as as well. So it's uh, it's been pretty awesome. And I couldn't be prouder of the guys in the 4888 shop to to be able to win four races in a row. I think that speaks volumes about how well. Both of our race cars are running out of that one team, out of that one building. But the fact of the matter is, I think we've got to be a little bit better. Last weekend, we were, you know, a whisker away from losing that one. This weekend, maybe we were one pick call away from from not winning this one. So 
we've got to continue to improve our product. So by the time we get to the chase, we're where we need to be. Thank you, Chad. Questions now for Chad or, or Mr. Hendrick. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll get one from Kenny. <clears throat> Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Chad, you talked about having strategies. How many different game plans do you have to come into a race <laughs> with so that if something happens, you're like, okay, if it's fuel mileage, we know we do this. If it's, if it's you know, somebody short pits or... It's tough. That's why I have Rick stand in my box. Um, so well, he... I, I told him in victory lane, I said, I can never be a crew chief. <laughs> never. I, I admitted that. When, as soon as you got to victory lane, I said, I can never do that. <laughs> It's tough. It really is tough. You know, we, we work really hard to try to understand and, and follow what's going on. You know, last weekend, we were only just a, a little bit away from being able to pull off last weekend. We did that last pit stop. We came out ahead of the two in the 88. And if, uh, if I hadn't messed up last weekend and torn up our race car, we probably would have had a shot to win, win there as well. But it's, it's really hard, and you've, you've really got to pay attention. It, it, it ends up being, you know, how much are you willing to dedicate to your time? And, you know, watching film, paying attention, watching what other teams do leading up to the event. Uh, and that's one thing that Dave Ellens, my, my lead engineer, uh, and, and myself, we, we pride ourselves on paying attention to what, what happens leading up to events. So, so coming into it, we feel like we've got a good idea what we need to do when situations arise. It doesn't always pan out, trust me. But we, we try really hard. How's that? Next question. Uh, I believe Mike Griffith had one in the middle. Raise your hand there, Mike. Get him the mic, please. Get Mike the mic. Chad, with what you guys have been able to do the last seven, eight years, the expectations for your team being so high, I know everybody kept a cool hand uh, before Jimmy's first win this season, but when the 48's not winning, is it is it pressure on you? Is it miserable? I know, Like I said, I know you guys keep a poker hand, but behind the scenes, <laughs> I've, got, I've got to think the expectation is almost win every week or – Somebody did something wrong. That is the expectation, obviously. We, uh, we go to the racetrack every week with the hopes and the, the, the intent of, of winning the race and sitting on the pole and leading the most laps and doing everything we possibly can. The reality is that's, that's very difficult to, to achieve. Uh, so when we don't run well, I can be grumpy, I would say, uh, from time to time. Um, but... You know, that's, that's the way it is, and the, the expectation is for us to go out there and perform uh, on a weekly basis as the best team out there, and that's, that's my expectation, and that's the expectation of all the fans and especially all you media guys because if we falter for two weeks, you know, we're washed up and we're all getting fired and, you know, everything's going crazy. So, so if we don't do that, that's the only way to keep you guys quiet. But it's, uh, it's, it's been a great year, and, you know, we started off a little bit slow, we said coming into it that we thought that it was going to be May time before we were able to hit our stride. And I think that, uh, you know, May showed up and we started to run a little bit better. And uh, I hope that we can continue to improve. We're joined now by our race winner. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is Jimmy Johnson. And he drives the number 48 Lowe's Cobalt Tools Chevrolet. Uh, and Jimmy, uh, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Congratulations Thank on you. your first win here at Michigan, your third win uh, of the season. And, I like how we display that on your uh, name plate there with the uh, wow. the three wins. And that was quick. Yes. Well, we, we, we like to work quick in NASCAR. <laughs> we should. <clears throat> Mr. Hendrick, we need to update yours there. I'm sorry. But uh, anyhow. <laughs> we don't have enough cars. <clears throat> we them. might not have, have enough have uh, five on deal there. there. Six. But, uh, Jimmy, just talk about the significance of today's win. Certainly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, five straight wins now for Hendrick Motorsports. But your third win of the season. And, uh, you know, we still got several to go here before uh, we set the chase field. So just talk about now how that, how your team is, is really starting to kick into gear. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thrilled on, on multiple levels. I mean, the success that we've had as a team and, uh, you know, kind of hitting our stride and, and getting to victory lane three times in the last four weeks. Our teammates and, um, you know, their success, the, uh, the company, and you look at our engines and our cars and what they're able to do, um, you know, Rick gives us all the tools to go out there and do our jobs and to have everything so fast and so good. Um, you want it to last forever. We know that it won't, but uh, it's just a good time to sit back and reflect and enjoy it. So I'm excited about all those pieces, plus uh, winning on Father's Day, having my family here, um, having the boss here. He wasn't here at the last race win that we had, so it's fun to see his face in victory lane. Um, for Chevrolet to win in their own backyard, 
uh, we need to switch that stat where that other brand wins too much here, and we need to get the, the bow tie more victories here. So uh, just a, a, lot of, a lot of things to be happy for. Okay, we'll open the floor up now for questions for either Jimmy, uh, Rick Hendrick, or Chad Knaus. Questions? Let's go to the press box. I know we have one up there. Go ahead, press box. Uh, the, Rachel Lindsay from The Blade in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, this question is for Jimmy. When you were going through those final laps, did you have any flashbacks at all to some of the <laughs> shortcomings you had here? Did you focus just on completing this race? And how did Chad motivate you in that stretch, and how did you motivate yourself in that? Well, we had, we had a good lead, so... Uh, it allowed me to take care of my stuff. Um, you know, when I heard 10 to go, you know, I've been there before with the lead. When I heard 5 to go, I'd been there before. It, you know, didn't win. Taking the white with the lead and didn't make it back. So I, I was really, uh, you know, I wasn't taking anything for granted on that final trip around. And about 200 yards before the finish line, I knew if the car exploded, I'd still slide across the finish line. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. So that's finally when I relaxed and, and let it go. Other questions from the press box? <laughs> We're clear. Let's go back downstairs. Mike, did you have another question? Let's go to Mike right here, please. Uh, just for, for Jimmy, I, I guess it's 69 wins, but when, when you hear first-time winner Jimmy Johnson anywhere, is it is it still, you know, lighten your, your mood or make you happy? And when was the last time you were a first-time winner at the racetrack? Can you even remember that? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe Bristol, I think, a couple years ago. Um, I, I can't believe I won to start with. I don't know what Rick saw in me or, or Jeff back in uh, 2000, 2001 when they put me in that car. And believe me, when I won my first race, I'm like, I just thought I had these guys snowed and they're giving me a year to <laughs> go out and race. I, they, they did see something. So, uh, you know, it, it is very cool to hear it. And I, I believe me, even at 69 wins, I still cherish them all. It is not easy to win in the sport. And uh, just thankful for the opportunity. You know, we've been with Rick and with Chad and Lowe's. You look at that whole, um, the synergy of that. We've all been together through this entire ride of the 48, and it's, it's special each time we win. Kenny Bruce right there. Kenny Bruce from NASCAR.com. Rick, I know you've had conversations with these two guys before when things weren't going as well as you'd hoped. But when things are going really well, do you just completely take a hands-off approach and let those guys do what they do? Do you have any conversations with them at all? No, 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 not really. I mean, well, if they need me, I'm there to help them. But uh, and they use all the tools that are in the toolbox. But uh, you know, I, I have nothing, not a whole lot I can add other than just each department doing everything they can do. And I sit in their their Tuesday meetings and. Uh, listen to the feedback from the drivers and the crew chiefs and the engineers and the motor shop and all. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it's got to be a crisis for me to get involved. He's the fireman. <laughs> just puts out fires. Let's go back up to the press box for an additional question. Go ahead, please. Uh, Dave Hackenberg from the Toledo Blade for Jimmy. Um, inside NASCAR, everybody knows about the crew chiefs and the crews. Maybe in the general public, that's not the case. 35 laps to go, and on the green, you're in the lead, and, and the crew chief says this is the time to do it. Can you just talk about the, the faith you have in him and, and the call he made there, taking four tires uh, at that point? Yeah, you know, there, I could tell in his voice that he was setting up for something, and um, I could sense what it was. And when he pulled me to pit lane, um, in, in the gap that I had over second spot at that time, I, I knew that four would be the call, and you may as well put four on if you got time for it. So um, we made that call and, and got out on the track, and then again, just going off the tone of his voice and, and what he was asking me to do with the car, and he kept asking me to save my tires in case there was a caution. I knew we were good on fuel. So that, that gave me a lot of optimism. Um, yeah. And then, honestly, once we had our four tires on and, and our fuel in our car, if the caution came in, I still think we were golden. Um, you know, we had enough to go the distance where everybody else was still short. So, you know, Chad saw an opportunity and really let that develop and uh, took great advantage of it. And, and, you know, sure, there was some risk at, at a small window of time in there, but it really was a win-win. Other questions downstairs? Nate? 
Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Today Sports. For Jimmy, uh, when Brad was in here, he said that uh, he felt like Penske had a little bit of an edge on the aero side, but that the Hendricks edge right now in engines is like a full season ahead of where everybody else is. Can you size up where you guys, where you feel you are compared to the competition right now? And is, is Penske kind of like the primary threat outside the walls of Hendrick and SHR right now? I'm not smart enough to tell you if it's aero or motor. I just know our cars are fast. You know, they run good. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say. The cars are all pretty equal aero-wise, uh, with with what you know the rules are from NASCAR. But I, I I'm not good enough to pick it out and tell you that we got people beat in, in just one area. It's a team effort. You know, our, our engine shop is is very strong. We've we've always known that, but uh, it's hard for me to say exactly where it is. Well, I mean, gosh, you look on Fridays and how much speed they have, and you could argue a couple points. You know, maybe they've got great power and able to execute and qualify and trim. Um, I, I don't know. They, they seem to have short speed, uh, short-term speed, like big short-term speed. And uh, we're slowly working our way that direction. Um, you know, but I'd say the car that it seems to be the best car off the truck to win the checkered falls is still the four car, week in and week out. Any other questions? <clears throat> Final question right there, Mike. <laughs> Jimmy, I asked Chad a similar question earlier about expectations. When you've won as much as you've won, I've got to believe it gets more difficult when you don't win. How do you prevent that from eating away at you, and, and how have you been able to overcome what we've seen so many other teams fall victim to And when there's expectations? So many teams have a hard time repeating or continuing to win. Honestly, I think what's working for us is the amount of time we have together. And we've lost races together. We've lost championships together. And certainly we've had success. But you know, 69 wins and six championships out of 13 years of racing is a pretty small percentage. You know, some of the wins or some of the losses you have are, you know, you got what you could that day and you went on. But a lot of those losses in their sting. And I think experience through those moments make us stronger and better. Um, everybody knows about 2005 and in you know, milk and cookies meeting that Rick had with us. I think from that moment on, you know, we were able to be more comfortable, oddly enough, in our own skin and as a part of Team 48. And, uh, you know, nobody's going anywhere. You know, we're, we're in this thing together, and, and we are Team 48. So falling back on that is really what I tell myself and, uh, you know, helps us through whatever the stretch might be. Congratulations to the number 48 team for their win here today and continued best of wishes to uh, 48 team and Hendrick Motorsports the remainder of this season.